Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we are taking a look at Ubuntu Mate 17.10. Now Ubuntu Mate, it has been a pretty popular distribution ever since it was first released, and the 17.10 release, um, really I think it is the best ever. They've had a lot of features, a lot of little fixes, a lot of little improvements. Um, really, really good distribution, uh, really, really good release. Uh, I think it is great for both the new user and experienced user alike. So um, I'll tell you what, let's just get started with the review and get this show on the road. Let's start out by taking a look at the welcome screen, something that I consider very well done on Ubuntu Mate. Here you will have all of the information a new user will want to get started. The intro section tells a bit about Ubuntu Mate and its goals slash core beliefs. We also have an outline of the features, a getting started section, community, and social media links. The getting started section is great for new users as it will walk the new user through basic tasks such as installing additional drivers, um, new firmware, Bluetooth and printer setup, customization, and keyboard shortcuts. In the updates and extras section, we can check for software updates, get additional codecs, and set up Blu-ray DVD support. We can also do a little bit of customization here by installing additional screensavers and add desktop themes and wallpapers. Clicking on software will take you to the software boutique which holds some of the most asked for software, some not available from the, the official Ubuntu repositories. And here is an important point about the boutique. As you can see here, it states there is an abundance of software available for Ubuntu Mate, and some people find that choice overwhelming. The boutique is carefully curated selection of the best in class applications chosen because they integrate well complement Ubuntu Mate and enable you to self-style your computing experience. If you can't find what you're looking for, install one of the software centers to explore the complete Ubuntu software catalog. So hitting on the green text will take you to the available software centers so you can install one of those. Personally, my choice is Synaptic, but I would think that for a new user, uh, the standard Ubuntu software center would be a better choice. Now the Boutique has some really great software options. Installation of applications is easy. Just simply click what you want to install and it's added to the queue. After you're done selecting all of your soft, uh, I'm sorry, uh, after you're done selecting all of your software, um, at that point you can go and click on the queue button at the top Make any final changes and uh, select apply changes. You'll be asked for your password and installation will proceed. Moving back to the desktop, what you see here is the default panel layout for Ubuntu Mate and it should be familiar with those who use Linux back in the old GNOME 2 days. Now, if you're like me and not particularly keen on this desktop layout, Ubuntu Mate provides several panel layouts that are easily changed by opening the Mate Tweak Tool and going to the panel section. So the traditional layout, that's the default layout that we see here. Cupertino is similar to Mac OS with a top panel and bottom dock. Redmond simulates a Windows layout, uh, older, older Windows layout, I should say. Pantheon gives you a top panel similar to the one in the traditional layout, but combines it with a bottom dock. Contemporary is similar to the traditional layout, but replaces the old style three-tier menu with the brisk menu. By the way, Brisk Menu, I consider to be one of the best menus available on any desktop environment. 
The netbook layout is a Space Saber layout. Personally, I think it could be improved by switching to the Brisk menu. The final theme I want to take a look at is Mutiny. The Mutiny uh, panel setup, it does a pretty good job of mimicking the Ubuntu Unity interface. We've got global menus, panel setup as a sidebar, window buttons on the left, and heads up display. Uh, let me open up LibreOffice here so we can take a look at some of these features. Um, now you can see we have our menus up at the top panel and window buttons over on the left. Now I'll just say right now I find both of those features kind of annoying, but if you are someone who's used to Unity, you're probably going to feel right at home. Now there's also the one feature that Unity had that I would love to see ported over to GNOME Shell, and that is the Heads Up Display, or HUD for short. Uh, if you need to search for something in your application menu, you can simply hit the Alt key, and you'll get a drop-down search uh, of the menus. Now, this is a huge time saver in applications that have extensive menus, um, GIMP, Inkspace, uh, LibreOffice. And as I said, the HUD is that one feature that I truly miss from Unity. And as much as I love GNOME Shell, I, I'm somewhat tempted to jump ship to Ubuntu Mate just so that I can have this feature. Now, I do want to point out that the HUD is also available on the Contemporary and Cupertino panel layouts. So you're not, uh, you're, you're not stuck with just using uh, uh, Mutiny if you want to have that feature. Now, I do want to point out while we're in the tweak tool that uh, you can also enable the excellent tilde pull-down terminal from here. Once it's activated, you can simply click the F12 key to open and close it. Uh, as well, you can uh, create your own panel layouts and save them to the system. You can also change other aspects of your desktop, such as going to the window section, switching the window buttons from left to right, vice versa, uh, enabling animations, uh, changing your window manager. Uh, speaking of the window manager, for myself, I found both Marco with Compton GPU Compositor and Compiz. Those gave me the best desktop experience. Now, if you want to enable fancy effects like wobbly windows and the desktop cube, you're going to need to activate Compiz and install the Compiz Manager to set up those effects. Uh, if you are interested in, in, in doing that, like a little tutorial on how to do that, uh, leave, me, leave, uh, leave me a little note down in the comments below and I will do up a video on how to set that kind of stuff up. Right-clicking on your desktop allows you to quickly get into your Appearances dialog. There's quite a few backgrounds available, as well as access to changing fonts and themes. Although, if you're like me, none of the themes that were installed by default really apply. Uh, thankfully, like I showed in the uh, Software Boutique, there are some other themes available. And then, of course, there's tons of themes available out there uh, on the internet if you want to download one of those and use one of those. Now, moving over to our software menu, we've got a really great selection of software that's pre-installed. Now, while there's nothing particularly unusual or earth-shattering here, you can tell that the software selection was well thought out. Uh, and of course, installing additional software, quick and easy, software boutique, uh, Synaptic Package Manager, the Ubuntu Software Center, however you want to go about that. Uh, just a few things I want to point out. Uh, under graphics, we've got Shotwell for Photos, which is a great basic photo manager. Uh, we've also got the excellent Mate Color Selection tool, especially useful if you're doing some graphics work. I love using the Eyedropper tool, which will allow you to find a color code by simply clicking anywhere. It could be an application, it could be on your desktop, uh, simply anywhere that, uh, that you can get that little eyedropper to. Uh, under the internet section, it's pretty standard affair here. Uh, Firefox for uh, internet, Thunderbird, email, and transmission for uh, BitTorrents. Uh, I added Chrome on here just so that I could test out the software boutique. 
Now under the office section, we have the uh, LibreOffice suite, good choice there. Uh, sound and video, we have the excellent VLC media player. Once again, very good choice. Now, since we're on the Monte desktop, we have the excellent Kaja file manager, which is similar in look and feel to the Nautilus file manager from the GNOME 2 days. The dual pane feature, which can be activated through the view menu or F3 on your keyboard, pretty popular feature with a lot of people. Uh, we've also got lots of options with the right click menu. And there's been some behind the scenes work to update and improve the performance of this application. And you know, while we're talking about little improvements, there have been a lot of little improvements to this whole uh, distribution as well. Uh, and, and you know, all these little improvements by themselves, they're not a big deal, but taken as a whole, they have created a much improved user experience. For example, you can now click shift and the print screen to activate the screenshot tool. Uh, the window slash super key opens the breeze menu. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, the obsolete GKSU is, has been replaced by policy kit. This allows us to still have admin access in applications like Kaja and so on, uh, but you're using updated and you know not uh, not obsolete methods uh, to achieve that performance has been pretty good in my testing uh, I've had a few issues and it's mainly been when switching panel layouts but they've been easily recoverable generally it has been um, you know panels that uh, when when you activate a certain panel it didn't pop up in the right space or uh, some indicators crashing as, uh, as I was switching the layouts. Um, fortunately, uh, you know, all these issues that I've had, they, they've been, uh, uh, you know, they've been real easy to recover from. So, uh, uh, you know, overall, no big issues there. And, you know, overall, this is a really, uh, a really snappy system, pretty light on resources. Uh, of course, we've got all of the improvements that went into the Ubuntu 17.10 base. So we have the 4.13 kernel. We have automatic network printer set up. Um, you know, all that software that has been updated to newer versions. We've got all that kind of stuff uh, included. So if you are on an earlier version of Ubuntu Mate, I'd highly recommend upgrading to this release. If you're on 17.4, this is a natural progression. And since 17.04 will run out of support before 18.04 comes along, upgrading is a no-brainer here. Personally, I'd even consider upgrading from the 16.04 long-term support release since there are so many improvements uh, in that roughly year and a half since that release. Overall, this is a great lease, and uh, it's one that I would recommend wholeheartedly to both new users and experienced Linux gurus alike. Uh, the distro is set up to get a newbie started right away, but at the same time, it is configurable enough that uh, those who are particular about panel layouts, window behavior, and so on, you're, you're going to be happy as well. Really, I, I can't recommend this distro enough. Well, that pretty much finishes up this review. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And don't forget to share this video. And as always, I look forward to seeing everyone on my next video. Thanks a lot.